Yes. Uh, first of all, I'll tell some briefly about IWM. It's a uh, independent trust, uh, non-profit organization formed by the government of Bangladesh in 1996, uh, primarily to support the water and environment sector of Bangladesh. Uh, we are working now in Bangladesh and overseas also in India, Malaysia and other countries. So basically we use mathematical modeling tools and uh, state of art data collection techniques to support the water resource development projects. Uh, uh, in Bangladesh, the government and the uh, NGOs, private sector, wherever uh, there is an opportunity, we support with the tools that are developed at the center. So I'll just not read what blue economy is, but I'll uh, state that for Bangladesh, blue economy is a new area, very untapped area, because we had been concentrating more on the land-based interventions and also on the disasters that occur in Bangladesh. So right now, more focus is going to the development of blue economy in Bangladesh. So uh, uh, a caution would be preservation and regeneration, because when you go for exploitation, excess ex exploitation may result in disaster in future. So as you can see, uh, Bangladesh has an exclusive economic zone, which is 119 approximately thousand kilometers square, still unknown to us. A lot of data is not there. So we have seen that our Indian friends have a lot of information uh, that can be shared with us. So uh, we are also right now planning to collect a lot of information over here uh, for the benefit of Bangladesh. So there is a potential of capture fisheries, agriculture, energy, biotechnology, submarine mining, tourism, land exploration, shipping and port facilities. As you can see, we have already uh, three ports functioning, Mongla, Paira, Chittagong, and Cox's Bazaar is another, but it's a, uh, it's a, uh, you can say that it's a tourism spot also. And 94% of our foreign trade is done to these ports. So there is a huge potential of feeder service from India, Sri Lanka, Singapore, Malaysia, Thailand, and Myanmar ports. And also ports can be utilized by Nepal, Bhutan, and Northeastern regions of India. Potentials for building deep seaports exist, and already Bangladesh is already considering constructing one deep seaport. Fisheries sector consists of 25% of the agriculture GDP, 3.76% of the total GDP. The marine fisheries have, has been a very untapped sector for Bangladesh. Actually, Bangladesh is very fortunate to have freshwater fisheries, and uh, we like uh, our freshwater fishes in our meals. So there's, uh, but there is a extremely big potential. As you can see, there are big fishing grounds in the oceans, which uh, I can say that Bangladesh has relatively not tapped in. But this is a sector that will grow right now. At this moment, World Bank is funding a fisheries. Uh, marine fisheries special planning project uh, where IWM is going to lead. That means we will be collecting a lot of information of fish catches that happens in the Bay of Bengal. So there is coastal capture fisheries, marine capture, marine aquatic shrimp, shrimp culture has been developing in the coast and it is uh, actually in conflict with the agriculture. So that is a big question for us. Another area is the oil and gas exploration. It's a huge area where uh, we feel that a lot of potential is there and renewable energy. Uh, these uh, uh, energy potentials have not been uh, assessed by Bangladesh. There is a uh, potential for wave energy, wind energy, and blue energy. As you can see, uh, Sri Lankan uh, participant Presenter already said the tourism. Uh, we have uh, tourist spots in Shundabans, Kuakata, and Cox's Bazaar. Lately, Bangladesh government has taken up 
programs for development of Shonadia Island as a tourist spot, Shabrang as a tourist spot, and St. Martin's Island as a tourist spot. So these other tourist spots are coming in. Another area thought by the Ministry of Water Resources is the huge potential of fresh water that we can store and then export. So there, uh, there's a pilot project now being taken up for harvesting of this fresh water in one of the channels in the coast and another between two islands. As a modeling center, we are more interested to know the developments that will happen in the Bay of Bengal in the coming 100 years. So IWM, in uh, collaboration with uh, Netherlands and the Denmark institutes and two uh, US universities have been uh, trying to uh, develop tools for forecasting what will happen in the next 100 years to the coast of Bangladesh. As you can see some of the results over here for the long-term morphological changes in the Meghna estuary, we are trying to uh, gather where the uh, uh, land mass will be developed so that we can plan our interventions, the drainage patterns and other infrastructures that will be required. There is also, as I have mentioned, that was a natural phenomena. This phenomena can be accelerated by uh, constructing cross dams and that also we have studied at the modeling center you can if you can construct this three cross dam as shown in the figure there is a potential of 60000 hectares in 30 years can be developed uh, in this area that means uh, land hungry country of bangladesh may develop another bangladesh in the bay of bengal in future the issues and activities and extreme events uh, i have highlighted in this slide we have issues like water logging, declining man mangrove forest, vulnerability of the Meghna estuary, the vulnerability of the hilsha uh, swanning. Actually, the hilsha fish is very popular as a meal uh, for Bangladeshis. Erosion and sedimentation in the coastal islands, vulnerability of the long sandy beach in the coast uh, in the southeast eastern part of Bangladesh, vulnerability of the coastal reef water logging in the northeast, uh, southeast region of Bangladesh. And we have the activities that are going out is fish culture, boat development, tourist spot development, gas mining, ship breaking. These are some of the activities that are happening in the coast of Bangladesh. We have the extreme events that we find is the severe cyclonics, storm surge, climate change and sea level rise, which are becoming a reality now. So exploring the blue resources, we find the finding the potentials and hyd hydrological and morphological data is very important. So at the center, we have the bathymetry of the Bay of Bengal, and we have a model for it. With this model, we can generate water level, we can generate salinity, temperature, sediment concentration, and we can have water quality assessments also. But the importance is that we have the tool, but the measurements are very scarce or project driven. So uh, actually uh, it's time that the government of Bangladesh uh, takes in long-term measurements in the coast, which will be very beneficial in order to see the sea level rise and climate change impacts of Bangladesh. And we can correlate the model results with the actual measurements that will be done. So what, what we are lacking is that we don't have the appropriate vessels, equipment, and technology for offshore survey and monitoring. I think over here, AFD can concentrate more and helping the Bangladesh government uh, with assistance in procuring vessels, equipment, and providing technologies for offshore survey and monitoring. This is the model I was talking about. Uh, we can, the models uh, generates water level and depth waves, cyclonic storm surges. We can forecast cyclonic storm surges in Bangladesh. And also we have uh, found by hind casting that our models are quite accurate. We can generate the salinity profile in the bay also, which will be very interesting for the fisheries sector. Uh, we can support the neighboring countries, India, Sri Lanka, and Myanmar with the tools we have with us. The model can be used for climate change scenario, uh, analysis also. 
So issues uh, related to the blue economy in the Bay of Bengal is that protecting the balance of environment by uh, avoiding over exploitation, which I have, have emphasized earlier. So that means we have to have the knowledge, expert workforce, technology for exporting offshore resources and know about the climate change. Otherwise, we may be uh, taking in measures which might affect the resources that are available in the Bay of Bengal. So the issues that we are more, uh, more alarmed now is the coastal flooding, coastal erosion, salinity intrusion, frequent cyclones and storm surges. And this affects the agriculture, shipping and trade, energy and tourism. And if we have a better management, then we can have improved fisheries management, breeding species adapted to climate change, financial assistance to the fishers, diversified tourism activities, and constructing salinity barriers. So as you can see, the resource identification is a very important factor where your data collections, data monitoring, and data preservation will be important. And as you can see, already two, uh, two agencies have come up with requests for marine special planning. The fisheries is one of the agencies, and latest is the BIWTA. They are wanting the navigation routes as marine special planning. Policy for exploitation of the blue economy. So if you have a better understanding of what is available and uh, the knowledge and the technology of monitoring this, then we can have investments, training and capacity and sustainable exploration of the resources. That's all from my side. Actually, we are a very tech, highly technical institute providing a modeling support to the different agencies in Bangladesh and also the donors. Thank you very much for giving me this time.